Hey everybody, um, I just got done watching the series finale of uh, At The Movies, and I wanted to just give some thoughts on what I think about that situation, about that show ending. <clears throat> At The Movies is a show that has existed and has been constantly running in, in one form or another since 1975. If you do the math, that's 35 years. That's a great run. But it's a show that... You know, didn't it's just two guys talking about new movies. It could have gone on forever if you think about it in one way, but if you think about it another way, it's been doomed for years. But I mean, me personally, I've seen. I used to watch it as a kid, so I've been seeing it off and on since the '80s, and I've watched it regularly since since I was in high school. So since 1996, that makes it. 14 years I've been watching the show every week and and <clears throat> sorry I'm like I'm like sad about this and I'm, I'm sad to see that I'm, I'm really yeah, I'm sad to see this the show go but I understand why it is um, so basically most people know it as Siskel and Ebert and they think that show ended it basically did end a long time ago um, Siskel and Ebert were the hosts for for the majority of the show's, you know, duration. And then Gene Siskel died, I think, in 99. And then Ebert had a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different uh, guest hosts. And he finally settled on Richard Roper, one of his colleagues at the Sun-Times. And they did it for some years until... Um, until Ebert got throat cancer or whatever cancer he has, and uh, he couldn't do it anymore. Roper carried the show for a few years after that. And then then Ben Lyons and Ben Mankiewicz took over for about a year, and I, I really didn't like what they did with the show. You know, Ben Mankiewicz is okay, but I'm, I'm, I wasn't a huge fan of him, and Ben Lyons is an idiot. Then... Um, then A.O. Scott of the New York Times and Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune took the show over. And I was extremely happy about that. I like those guys. They were always my favorite guests when Roper was running the show with different guest hosts. I always looked for, like, if Michael Phillips or A.O. Scott was on, I was happy because they were good critics. And I thought over the last year or so that they were... They were hosting the show. I thought they did a great job. I, I really like them. I, I like I respect their opinions. I like the show that they put together every week. I like some of the stuff that they're doing in the last couple of months <clears throat> near the end, where they would uh, they had like little segments where they would talk about one actor and their career. They would do uh, like an over under segment where they'd be like overrated Tom Cruise movies or underrated Tom Cruise movies, stuff like that. And just they're just good all-around critics. I've always, I've liked them for a while, since I discovered them, I guess. Probably as guest hosts on the show. Um, and if you want, you know, give them a, sh go, go look up uh, A.O. Scott's reviews for the New York Times or Michael Phillips' reviews for the Tribune. They're good. And, you know, they'll still be doing their written reviews, obviously. But, unfortunately, the show's ratings dwindled. Uh, you know, probably over the last decade, but really once Ben Lyons and Ben Makowitz took over, it, you know, it really plummeted. And Michael Phillips and Angel Scott couldn't really bring the show back up enough to the, to the ratings that Disney wanted. Um, so that's it. The show's over after 35 years. And, you know, I guess you could say, this is what I would say. I would say that the show was greatly injured once Gene Siskel died. And even more so when Roger Ebert couldn't do it anymore. They were the faces of the show. They were the heart of the show. So in a way, it's been living past this expiration date for a while now. And really, though, the fatal the fatal wound to the show is the rise of the Internet in the 2000s. You no longer need a centralized location to hear about two people's um, opinions on a movie especially professional critics, which most mainstream people look down on for some reason. 
I don't know why. Probably because they're pissed off because they have to work real jobs and these guys get to bullshit about movies all the time. But for me, I really didn't want to see the show go. I, I continued to watch it every week. And I continue to love it, and it, it really is a, a sad day to see it go. Um, from high school on, I can't tell you how many movies, I'm, we're talking dozens and maybe hundreds of movies that I've seen that I never would have seen or never even heard of if it weren't for at the movies. Every year, you know, including this year, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but probably you know one of my favorite movies from 2000. Um, 2008, like before the devil knows you're dead. I wouldn't have heard of that without at the movies, probably. And I just always really just, you know, enjoyed the discussion. And for me, when I was in high school and I started to watch the show re religiously and uh, read Roger Ebert's reviews in, in the Sun Times, that's kind of when I, you know, found what I wanted to do. What, um, what I was suited for and what I loved. Uh, if you ever read my blog, I'd say I have what I have about 576 posts on my blog now, and I'd say at least half of them are movie reviews. Um, look at my YouTube channel. For the last couple months, all I've done is talking about movies. And so for me, it really opened up the possibilities of, you know, or opened up the possibility of doing that for a living and. It drew me into that world, and it drew me into film discussion and film criticism. And, you know, it, yeah, you can get your opinions from Joe Schmo on the internet now. And that's, I think more people, you know, there's people out there who, they'd rather hear what Rambo Rath has to say about a movie than A.O. Scott of the New York Times or Roger Ebert. Um... But they, you know, those these critics, they even said it in the final episode tonight. They don't see themselves as as these snobs that are sitting in an ivory tower, judging films and telling you what is right and what you should like. What it's always been about is elevating films as as an art form and uh, and just talking about them. That's what it's really about. It's about discussion. That's really what I was been trying to do with my YouTube videos it's not really about me telling you oh this is this movie is good or bad which I do tell you that but it is my opinion obviously and I'd like to hear other people's opinions I like I think of the show and I think of any film criticism as the opening of a discussion and it's cool now with the internet that the, the discussion could continue in the comments <laughs> not that I get comments on my stuff but you know People like Roger Ebert, if he puts something on his blog, he gets the discussion going. He gets the ball rolling. Um, I think that the, the effect the show had on me, it, it had for a lot of people. Like A lot of people heard of movies that they wouldn't have heard of if it weren't for that show. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that got into film criticism and started writing reviews of movies or doing YouTube videos like this. Who they wouldn't have thought of that if there was never at the movies, or they never would have thought that it was a legitimate way to uh, to pursue a living. And maybe it isn't anymore. Look at the show ended. Um, people don't tune into that anymore. They'll tune into their own little niche group of people that agree with their opinion, and that's enough for them. Um, but I, I, I really don't think film criticism is going away. I think maybe this style of show is done. But there will always be people on YouTube or wherever talking about movies and sharing opinions on it and discussing films. It's just uh, maybe not as a profession so much anymore, unless you're really good at what you do. And it was it's already like that. I mean, like... As far as professional critics go, there's only about 100 or so in the country. Like maybe 130, 140, something like that. And you know, the rest of it is just people like me that want to talk with other people about movies. Or, and, you know, if I'm being honest, you know, dream in your head that you could do something like that for a living. Is, you know, discussing films, you know, criticizing films, analyzing films. 
maybe even writing a film or two. By the way, you probably know Ebert did write a film once. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. Um, I guess I just want to say um, I'm sad. I'm I'm sad to see it go, and I want to know if anyone else is misses it or they think that you know this is long overdue that it should end. I mean, I think you could have both. I think you could have a show like this every week and people on the internet just doing their own shit like this. But uh, unfortunately, that's not the way it went. Um, I don't know where I'm going to hear about these little movies anymore that don't get any press or any hype, you know. But I'm sure I'll find a way, and I'll keep giving you my thoughts on my blog and on here. But uh, once again, man, it's, it's too bad that it had to end, and to, had to end the way it did. I think uh, A.O. Scott and Michael Phillips are really good guys, and they did a, they did a good job uh, carrying on Cisco and Ebert's legacy. Um, I guess we'll have to, uh, you know, tune into them and print for as long as that lasts, which is probably on its deathbed too, but, uh, stay tuned, more, more movie reviews coming, right?